It is Friday, but Friday is just the same as any other day. Do not treat Friday differently. Ah, see, I'm having to wear my nose strips to sleep so that Nat can actually get any sleep. It's literally ripping the skin off my nose. Um, so yeah, don't treat Friday as a different day. It's so funny, isn't it? How you've auto reset, that's gone, yay, it's Friday. Um, which is kind of cool, which means we might have more time with friends and family at the weekend. But that is also a tiny bit of coaching in itself there. H who's saying happy Wednesday or happy Thursday or, or happy Saturday or happy Sunday? A massive mindset shift is to definitely get out of the Monday to Friday, Saturday to Sunday mentality. Because that destroys so many goals because we do that. Oh, I'm so good. I'm so good with my food. Uh, I'm so good with my training. Uh, I'm focused. Uh, my morning routine's on point. Everything's on point. And then, bang, Friday comes and everything goes to rat SH1T. Okay? Hands up if you've done that. Oh my God, for years and years and years of life. Okay? Um, so, yeah, let's celebrate Friday and be happy. But let's celebrate every day and be happy and treat each day with the same mindset. So again, Lisa, that's amazing. Emil and Samantha Jane, say hello. Let us know where you're from. Introduce yourself. You're part of the new family. Treat every day as the same because this is how uh, I urge you to start to think, Lisa, especially in view of that comment, is... Shouldn't be any more difficult to drink on a Saturday. James, Nicola, say good morning. Or a Sunday or a Friday than it is to a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Because it's just a different day. And when we stay locked in this, I used to call it Friday, Friday euphoria, Monday morning blues mindset. Where we kind of, we've created that as a habit ourselves. Morning Lisa, morning Dawn. Um, it's a habit that we create ourselves and it can be, especially in, um, in relation to junk food, alcohol and drugs, it can be what's called an habitual addiction. So you're not actually addicted to sniff or wine or pizza, whatever your vice is. Yes, Manchester lad. Um, it's just what you've done every Friday. Saturday or Sunday for a very long period of your life. So if you've got a chippy tea, as I believe you northern folk call it, every Friday for like five years, it's hard to break that. But you don't even think about going to get chippy tea or ordering a pizza on a Wednesday because it's not a habit. So you've created that bad habit. You know, some of you will auto reset lads to you literally finish work and the first thing you do on a Friday is go and pick up eight cans and a bottle of wine for the missus okay almost on auto reset it's her an habitual addiction some of you will call your dealer three drinks into every drinking session because that's just what you've always done you know it's a vice and then as soon as your your inhibitions or your yeah inhibitions that's the right word um are slightly lowered ah oh, fuck it in my ring you know, or, oh, should we get some drinks in? Or, ah, oh, sod it, I'm, I've had a few drinks now. Who wants pizza? Who wants curry? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a cycle um, and it's an habitual addiction. So this is absolutely nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about today. Although I am currently, myself, 12 weeks completely sober of anything. Uh, yesterday, 84 days, um, which I'm absolutely buzzing about. And um, if anyone does, is struggling with drink or anything else. Um, I use an app called I Am Sober. Okay, it's incredible. It tells me how many days, weeks, hours uh, that I've been sober for. Uh, it sends me a daily reminder that I wrote myself about why I want to remain sober. Uh, and it has pictures of Nat on it. It has pictures of Logan on it. And it also has my daily statement um, that I wrote on day one of the reason why I want to remain sober, okay? Um, I'll post it up on this page if you want. I don't really mind. I'm not embarrassed about it. It's a bit deep. Um, but yeah, buzzing to have done 12 weeks. But a massive, massive tip is try and get out of the Monday to Friday, Friday to Sunday mindset. So it's just natural. 
Um, the way, I can't even remember who it was now. Morning, Jessica. Colas, let us know where you're from. Um, it's normal just to celebrate it's being Friday, but that's normally celebrated with, why are we celebrating it? Because we've got a job that we hate and we've finished it, okay? We're now going to suppress our feelings about hating our job and do nothing about it and sedate ourselves with drugs, alcohol and junk food at the weekend. That's why we're celebrating. It's Friday because we have to get rid of the thing that we, that we hate, the job, okay? The J-O-B. And then we're going to suppress ourselves. Not going to talk about the fact that we hate job work. Uh, in fact, some people do talk about it a lot. Or we're going to suppress and we're going to sedate. Um, so we're going to get smashed all weekend uh, and eat loads of shit. Um, either because we've because we do hate the job and that's our way of dealing with it, or two, because if we've fallen into a trap, if you haven't watched it already, Derek, that's epic and I'm very proud of you. Derek, four weeks sober, give him some love. Um, blah, 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 uh, comment, well done. Um, show su supporting each other is so important. Um, but it's either one of those two reasons. If you haven't been on my YouTube channel yet, Lee Freeman Fitness, go and check it out. There is one video on there called Falling Into the Trap of Replacing Good with Bad. So, so many of you will do this with nutrition, with training and with alcohol. Oh, I've been good all week. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm absolutely going to smash it all weekend and ruin every single piece of good work that I've done, plus some on top. And then what I'll do is I'll jump on the scales on Sunday and wonder why I haven't lost any weight, even though I was good all week. Well, you were good all week, Sharon, but you then consumed 7,000 calories between finishing work on Friday and jumping on the scales on, on Sunday morning. So it's no shock to anyone um, that you haven't lost anything, okay? For people that weigh themselves, my clients don't, okay? We go on pictures, but you can easily fall into the trap. That's the number one. You fall into the trap of replacing good with bad. Oh, I've been good all week, so um, I'll have a pizza. Let's say that pizza ended up being 1,500 calories with wedges and cookie dough ice cream and whatever else you bought with it, okay? Um, let's say you were really good and you were in a calorie deficit of 200 calories per day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there we go, a thousand calories that you created through dieting and exercise. Smash your pizza, there you go, one false move, you're in a surplus of 200 calories and you will gain body fat. But I was good all week. Been there, done that, don't fall into that trap. So that's one reason. And the other reason is just the habit. So just get out of get out of thinking days of the week. Um, and if you go back every single video on this page, I'll recap yesterday's, but if you go back, they're, they're stored under videos. And then there's about a 14 day turnaround for the designer to do his stuff and then upload them onto YouTube and repurpose them for Instagram. So you can get them both there forever. But on this page, they are organized under videos. If you go back over the last two weeks, you will see a lot of coaching on how to start thinking about changing your careers if it's making you happy. Because here's the kicker before I actually even start talking about what it is that I've planned to talk about today is the reason why you have the Friday euphoria is because you don't like the Monday to Friday. It's as simple as that, okay? How about... Right now, if that's you, you grab a pen and paper, because you know I'm massive on that, and you start to make a list of what you can do to create a life and a career that you don't have to escape from at the weekend, okay? Because, and it might just be, there are some different reasons why people celebrate the weekend. Like Carly said, Jeff's coming home, or it might be, uh, I get to see my kids and I get to spend more time with my kids. That's a great reason to be celebrating Friday in the weekend. But if you're celebrating um, Friday because you finally finished work for the week, then your number one focus, the entire biggest focus in your life that you need to spend the maximum amount of time you have available on, is getting a pen and paper out and working out how you're going to create a life and a career that you don't need to escape from at the weekend because that's why you're looking forward to the weekend so you can escape from um, 
Wow, Catherine, that's amazing. Guys, four years, show us some love. Uh, I think uh, and for a couple of glasses, Nat's about the same. She's she's probably had one or two bottles of champagne or Prosecco in total um, in the six plus years we've been together. And she has to live with me on a daily basis. If a person doesn't deserve um, a medal for that, then I don't know what, because it's not easy living with someone with energy levels like this, because trust me, when they crash the other way, they're just as bad. But again, that's what I'm improving. That's what I'm improving on all the time. Okay. Um, so yeah, if that is you, don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. I get it. Um, I really do. So yesterday, so we, let's recap. Should we recap? Okay. So we left on that we were going to talk about Parkinson's law. Um, my iPad always had. So yeah, we discussed being effective and being efficient. Yeah, I agree with those comments as well. Um, drink now. I would have a glass of champagne, a few glasses of champagne, a few bottles of champagne um, on a celebratory occasion because it was something mint and I wanted to enjoy it. Maybe if I was on Bora Bora Beach in Ibiza. Okay, I wouldn't just do it at home on a Friday. That's just drinking for the sake of drinking. Like we discussed working for the sake of working. It's completely pointless. It's going to do nothing apart from escape you for, for a few hours, make you feel like shit the day after, escape for a few hours, everything will come back worse. Uh, you'll eat loads of crap and then you'll feel like curly white dog SH1T um, tomorrow morning. It's just not worth it, okay? Yeah, maybe your friend's just got engaged. Go and have a glass of champagne with her. Insane, that's enjoyable. Park it on four glasses, have an amazing night, go home tomorrow and continue life as normal. Um, drinking two bottles of wine every Friday because you're not happy with your life. <sighs> Gotta go, okay? Because it will not, all it will do is escape you for a few hours and it's boredom. Okay, you need to find purpose, purpose in your working life, purpose in your personal life. So we discussed being effective versus being efficient. Um, we discussed what gets measured, gets managed, um, how to not burn out and how we work on making sure we focus on the 20 percent of the actions that create 80 percent of the results and we also remove the 20% of the actions or people that cause 80% of the problems, okay? It's called elimination. We need to eliminate the crap. So if you're, you could well be, let's use that as a real world example. And we're on 16 minutes past and I've not even started today's coaching. The 20% of your life could be the drinking, the pizza and the takeaway every weekend, okay? That causes 80% of the problems and completely ruins your entire week. It's a real world example, isn't it? Which 20% of your actions are causing 80% of your problems? That's what we need to eliminate and we need to make sure that we focus on the 20% of your actions which are leading towards your happiness, okay? Apply that to every aspect of your life, not just business, but diet, fitness, friends, everything, okay? Um, <coughs> we discussed that being busy is lazy, okay? Lazy thinking, no planning, low productivity, yes man slash woman mentality, no learning and no changes. Being overwhelmed is as productive as doing nothing. Ooh, that's gonna hurt the, the overwhelmed crew, isn't it? Um, but it's true, being rushed equals a lack of time, equals a lack of priority. If you're overwhelmed, you're not scheduling and you're not priority, which is why we all need to complete our world-class daily planner every single day. Because guess what? It also has a section. Now, um, clients, you should all be doing this, that says consecutive number of alcohol-free days. That's on the planner every single day. Um, so I don't have enough. Uh, I don't have enough. I don't have hours. Not to have hours, to have tasks is what we discussed. Um, and we also... Um, create, discuss the deadlines, which is that is what we are finally going to come on today, 18 minutes into the Facebook Live. Hats off to Lee Freeman and the waffle, okay? So Parkinson's Law. Just think about this. This is what I talked about yesterday and it all builds into today. So uh, if this doesn't make sense, go back and watch yesterday's live. Um, if you have two hours to fill, Subo, Subo is in the house. 
Show us some love. Subo, say hello and let us know where you're from. Um, if you have two hours, you fill it. Okay, if you have eight hours, you fill it. If you have 15 hours, you fill it, okay? And hands up, I want every single person to comment, yes, who has said this this year? Because I bet every single person has said it this year. Um, oh my God, I'm just so busy that, oh, babe, babe, they just aren't, I can't carry on like this. There just aren't enough hours in the day. Okay, I think I've said it every single day this year. Which is why I'm going so hard on this coaching. Because, and I want to highlight this. If my coaching ever comes across preachy, it's 100% not. I guarantee you guys, what I am struggling with will be what I'm coaching. What I'm, why I'm coaching that is because I know 100% if I'm struggling with it, you guys are as well. So that's kind of how I want these to be. Not listening to me like it's a, a voice on a book or it's, you know, it is, I do pre-plan, like pages and pages of notes, but it's also from, um, yeah, Brightly, that's, it's just so true, isn't it? Richard, say good morning and let us know where you're from. There's just not enough hours in a day. There's just not enough hours in the day. And um, Lisa Jane, I'd disagree with that ever so slightly. Always enough time if you want it bad enough. Um, I would say there's always enough time if you prioritise it and schedule it way enough. Um, I, I want to be, there's lots that I want to be. Uh, just wanting that um, isn't going to ensure that I do the work in order to get it. That comes down to the schedule and the planning and the priority, okay? So, like I said, um, we've all said that, haven't we? I've said it yesterday. Bridie, you have said it to me every single time I've ever spoken to you. <laughs> um, I think all of you have said it to me at some point whatsoever, okay? Um, I say it every day, okay? But again, hands up, Who's who went to, um, let's go back to uni or let's go back to school or let's go back to any form of qualification that we've done, okay? Who's literally left it until the last hour that it needed to be submitted, whether it's the dissertation, um, whether it's the book, uh, whether it's the homework, whether it's the anything, you know, you have all this time to do it, but no, you literally do not do it until the last hour. You're literally in the library at uni, printing it off and giving it in like 3.5 seconds before the deadline, okay? I still do that now. I do it with mix. I don't if I'll have like an impending mix for a radio show, okay? And I'll do it an hour an hour before it needs to get submitted, okay? Despite 15 messages from the producer saying, have you done that mixlet yet? Uh, I'll focus on something else because it might be one that I'm not that comfortable with doing kind of thing. Um, so um, what happens is, this is all related to Parkinson's law, okay? And um, the perceived importance can be in relation to the time allotted to complete it, okay? So it can be dictated like that. And that's why we need to create, okay, Catherine, rather than becoming the queen of the procrastination, what we need to become is the queen of creating the magic of the imminent deadline, okay? Because when we have time pressure, time pressure forces execution. It only, it means you simply have, pardon me, you simply have absolutely no flipping choice but to only focus on the priorities and to focus on them with razor sharp focus, okay? So the longer time we have to do things, you just end up making a mountain out of a molehill, don't we? I do. Um, and you can literally take six weeks to do a high pressure, high value, um, highly stressful job that would actually take six hours. But you can make it last six weeks. We all do this. I do this. I'm the king of it. 
and it's what I need to work on the most, okay? So there's two approaches to Parkinson's law, which we can both implement right now, okay? Both, just me and you, all of us. Um, so number one, okay, this is what we're talking about. And remember that as well, write that down. Become the queen. We can all be queens for today. Um, the queen of creating the magic of the imminent deadline. Okay, even if it doesn't exist, because this creates time pressure and this forces execution at a laser sharp focused level. Okay, so the two approaches that we can look at, okay, are number one, we can limit tasks to the important ones to shorten the amount of work time, okay? That's one way we can become more effective, okay? So we only do the tasks that are important on a daily basis. Stop shuffling papers, okay? Um, and this will shorten the amount of time we have to work, which means we'll be less, spread, less stressed. Now, here's the kicker, here's the other way to do it, is we shorten the work time so that we limit the tasks to the important ones, okay? So how do we do this? We do this by planning in family time, planning in other stuff, planning in gym, finding a purpose outside of work and limiting the time. This is really hard, especially for entrepreneurs um, and, and self-employed people. But if we limit the amount of time we have to work, you know, you could even be, you could even do like this. And, you know, some people who, if you're unhappy, unhappy in your job, I say you start using that to your advantage, okay? Because 99%, your boss isn't going to be watching you. So whatever jobs he gives you, get them done in four hours and then spend four hours focusing on your new career that you're going to do when you leave. Focusing on the courses that you can do. Focusing on research, okay? Use it to your advantage, you know? He's happy for you. As long as that work's done in eight hours... He's happy. So get it done in two and spend six hours working on yourself. That I that I've know a lot of music producers at the moment that who work full time, and I've coached them this, and they are creating some incredible music at the moment because they're working from home and they've gone from sat in an office making two hours worth of jobs last eight hours to doing the two hours worth of jobs in two hours and spending six in the studio making music, just dipping in when they need to. Okay, we well, can all do that. Um, but here's the kicker. Here's my spin. Why don't we all do both? Why don't we limit all our tasks to the important ones so we have to work less? And why don't we also shorten the work time so that the tasks are limited to important? It's a two-way thing, okay? We can do both, but we have to start by outlining the highest value tasks. And then we have to set a short, clear magical deadline and stick to it okay because when a task you know all tasks should be mission critical it's as simple as that and the deadline should be aggressive and when we are only doing critical tasks with aggressive deadlines trust me you will start to fly okay if not you will start to make the unimportant important no deadline no focus you will accomplish nothing, okay? If this is you, don't feel bad because I literally feel like I did this for around about 15 years of my life, okay? So another great way that we can coach ourselves on this, okay, is to ask better questions. All Paul, basically, that's all he does in coaching me. He asks me better questions and he gets, gets me to ask myself better questions on a daily basis, okay? So one question may be, um, and I challenge you to do this on a daily basis. Good morning, Charlotte. Say hello and let's know where you're from. Morning, Keza. Um, ask yourself better questions on a daily basis and you may even need to set a reminder to do this, okay? So is... Let's do this every three hours. Michaela, good morning. How are you doing? Show us some love. Um, is what I'm doing now the highest value, 
time critical, most important task on my daily schedule? Ask yourself that at nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, one o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock. Is what I am doing now the highest value, most time critical, important task on my daily schedule? And then very quickly after, you need to answer another question. And that question is quite simply, if not, why not? Why aren't you doing that job? Try this today, guys. It's unbelievable. Every two hours. Is what I'm doing now the most important thing that I need to do today? That has a deadline. If not, why not? Why not? Because I'm peeing around doing low value tasks with no schedule, no focus, no deadline before moaning to everyone about how busy I am and how there's not enough hours in the day and champion or blaming the thing that's stressing me out most, which I could have done at 9am this morning. But I, me, chose to spend time doing other low value things like flicking on Instagram for one watching other people's highlight reels whilst feeling bad about my own soul-sucking life because everyone else seems to be in better shape, making more music and making more money than me. And bleh, get rid of that. Okay, now another killer question. I've actually set a reminder in my phone to ask myself this question today every single hour. On the hour, every hour. That question is, it's actually two questions. Number one is, am I being productive or am I just making up being busy? And that's going to ping on my phone every hour. Also, it's going to be followed by another ping one minute later that says, am I inventing things and being busy to avoid something that's more important? Right, grab a pen now or put it in your notes. Four questions. You can ask all of these today. Write them all down. Number one, um, is what I'm doing now the highest value, most time critical, important task on my daily schedule? If not, why not? And dig deep on that reason. Be honest. Your answer literally might be, because I'm messing around doing low value tasks, flicking on Instagram. If so, great. Own it. Learn from it. Number two, am I being productive or am I just being busy? Am I inventing things to do to avoid something important? Okay. Now, here's the kicker. I've actually brought it in. I've only gone two minutes over. Dedication. Oh, he's just so dedicated. You see how long she spends in the gym? She's so dedicated. Okay. Dedication is very often meaningless work in disguise. Write that down. Here is the example. The example is in the gym. Every time. I've seen how dedicated he is. He spends three hours in gym fuck does he need to spend three hours in gym for? It's not. It's meaningless work in disguise, okay? If you are spending three hours in the gym, you are unfocused, undriven, piddling around on your phone, skimming on Instagram, watching the goddamn TV, looking around at everyone else, what they're doing, see who's looking at your perky little bum while she bent over doing some dumbbell rows, lads seeing who's looking at their chest in the mirror or lifting their abs up to see if any girls check them out. Lads, stop it if you're doing that. Or shadow boxing. No one thinks you're tough. You look like a knob. Um, and you just go into the gym for three hours. You are going to the gym. None of you, including me or Nat or Keza or anyone can go to the gym and put in a world-class high intensity session for three hours, okay? But you will tell people you're doing that and you will rate your dedication, you will rate your progress on how dedicated you feel you are. 
okay? You will often rate your dedication on the amount of time you spend doing something. You're just unproductive, okay? I need 35 minutes to train my chest and it is done. I cannot push it any further than that, okay? Be ruthless and trim the fat, okay? Work smart, work intensely and work hard. Again, oh, I'm doing all the training I can. I've only got 40 minutes per day. Well, if you're doing 40 minutes and you can run on level eight for 40 minutes, then we need to be pushing to level 10. And then we need to be pushing to level 12. Those are ways we're going to step up the intensity, okay? Many people are just locked in this mindset that in order to train better and get better, I have to do longer. It's simply not true, okay? Um, this is, like, I train, I train at warehouse gym and kitchen in um, workshop. No offence to anyone who's training there, but there's a lot of what I just described going on. Tits and arse everywhere. Lads taking their tops off and freaking flexing in mirror like bell ends in front of everyone. Sorry, lads, but you look at it. Okay. And do you know what happens? Every time I go in and I see Jamie or Joe, whoever on the desk, I go in and I do more reps, more sets, more work, more focused than all of them put together. And I've left almost always before anyone else who was in when I went. And when I leave, whoever's on the desk goes, oh, that was a quick session. So they're just conditioned to the fact that he didn't, he didn't train very long, did he? But and I don't mean this to sound like I'm bigging myself up. But I kind of am. I don't really care. I'm comfortable with that. But I just go in and work hard. For 45 minutes. I don't have my phone on me. I focus. I know what I'm doing. It's razor sharp. Okay. And just get in and get it done. Don't, don't trick yourself into thinking that because you're doing something for a long time, it's effective. It's not. You're prattling around and just wasting hours and then claiming that you're so dedicated because you sent, spent so much time doing said task. Okay, I hope that's helpful, but be ruthless, okay? I don't care how dedicated you are. I want results. I want to see results. And you don't get results by he who works longest is not the most effective. He who, talk, who, he who works longest ends up saying things like there just aren't enough hours in the day, okay? So be ruthless. Focus on results, okay? Dedication is very often meaningless work and wasted time in disguise. I love you all. Have an awesome day. Um, keep killing it. See you soon. Tomorrow morning, eight o'clock.